Hey, welcome back to the channel Push Rodders. So this video is going to be all about doing a general service on your vehicle. Now, this, you know, any light vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's petrol, diesel, like this one. This is not going to be all about, oh, this is how you change an oil filter, this is how you change the oil, air filter and so on. We're going to dive a little bit deeper in that we're going to be doing more or less a nut and bolt check with changing filters and oils so it's like getting a screwdriver making sure your hose clamps are tight checking for any coolant leaks you know, just simple stuff like wiggling the hose you know just doing visual checks is our is our engine belt tight all sorts of little bits and pieces that not that I watch many service videos because I don't really have to being a mechanic, but uh, I dare say a big percentage of the service videos or how-to videos are more or less this is how you change an air filter. And it just does that and that's it. So anyhow, let's get this uh, Pathfinder jacked up. We'll get the oil draining and then we'll... Uh, We'll cast our eye over everything and we'll do an up and bolt check and then we'll go from there. So we've jacked it up. We've used all the proper stands and jack and all that sort of stuff. Next thing to do is just give the car a bit of a shake. While well, you still got the wheels on. And if anything moves or anything like that, you're not going to really wreck anything if it wants to drop. It's just like a bit of an added safety precaution sort of thing. Alright, well, now that we've got it jacked up safely on stands, let's drop out oil. Now we've got the engine oil draining. One thing I like to do is just pull the dipstick up like that. Just make sure it doesn't arc on your battery or if the battery is close by. And put the filler plug up there. Now the reason why I do this is more as a reminder. Because I'm out in the field, being an on-site mechanic, you're going to get a heap of distractions. Like phone calls from customers, uh, you might have the customer talking to you telling you what else is wrong with the vehicle or just wanting to have a chat and a cuppa and you know all that sort of stuff so just a quick helpful little hint and look it can happen to you while you're in your driveway you might get a phone call from your mate going oh how was the party last night that sort of thing and you might forget to have all this still on and you go oh if I put that oil in or not if I checked it or not so just to save the guesswork leave it leave the dipstick all the rest of it just as a simple reminder and you can go oh okay I'll just double check it anyway okay so before look, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in but um, before we go changing filters and all that sort of stuff while we're getting the oil to drain we're just gonna cast our eye over the top section of the engine bay so start by checking hose clamps alrighty next on the list we're just going to check vacuum lines make sure they're not perished or you know split broken especially on a petrol vehicle could lead to the engine running really rough higher fuel consumption um, all sorts of different weird and wonderful things while we're here, we'll check all the heater hoses. Just visual check, make sure there's no, make sure there's no leaks. Uh, radiator hoses. Now these spring clamps, they can lose their tension over time. Like that one there, which I've just moved out the way quickly because I didn't want to dump all the coolant. I just put a uh, a worm drive style hose clamp on there. Now, top tip, if the engine's still hot, do not remove the radiator cap. 
because you'll end up with a face of boiling hot coolant and you'll be down to the emergency uh, department, the burn section with more than likely the second or third degree burns. So just be super careful of that. Now I haven't uh, started this engine. Well, I have just to move it, but um, it's not at running temperature at all. So that should be okay. There we go. Yep, coolant's fine. Now you'll see what I mean with the green fuzz on the little hose there. But that's only just a little uh, hose going to the overflow bottle for the, or the recovery bottle. Same deal again. I can have a look in here. Just when it's hot, make sure it's got coolant. Uh, sorry, it's uh, when it's hot, make sure you don't undo it. And while we're at it, we'll just have a quick look at the rubbers on the cap. Make sure they look all good. They're not perished or worn out. Uh, got cuts in it, all that sort of thing. Now, being plastic and having thousands of heat cycles a year with the engine starting up, stopping, this little section here, it's actually just a minute little crack and it's leaking pressure here and it's starting to... Uh, you can just see it dribble out a little bit so that's going to be on our list is replace overflow bottle now we have our we'll leave that open we'll top that up in a minute that's our windscreen washers now brake fluid you might be able to see that most brake fluid reservoirs have got max or full or something along those lines cast into the plastic and a low mark or high low just have a quick look the little strainer can come out sometimes it's a little bit difficult with the with the plastic to try and judge the uh the height that's getting on a little bit low so what i'll do is i won't top it up I'll go and have a look at the brakes, but that'll be when we uh, finish up the oil change. Power steering, same sort of deal. We've got cold, hot, max, minimum, all that sort of deal. Might just put that down a little bit. Now, some, have, some power steering reservoirs have a little dipstick on the cap. Others have got that there. And we are pretty much around about sort of in between max and minimum. Battery. Battery, what we want to do here is just wiggle it. Wiggle our terminals. What we're looking for is if any of the like white fuzz or anything like that best way to get rid of that is boil the kettle and just pour some boiling hot water that'll get rid of all the fuzz there worst comes to worst if you want to reset your um or your radio and whatever other electronics in the car disconnect the battery terminals you can clean them with uh, a little bit of sandpaper um, there are specialized battery terminal cleaning tools all that sort of thing so that's pretty good alrighty uh, belts now some some belts are going to be harder than others to get into now I've recently done this belt so I know it's good but essentially let's go over here I might be able to see probably not essentially what you want is say the belt is in between my fingers what you want to do is have around about uh, under under a quarter of a turn so like if you twist the belt say if you twist the belt 360 degrees 
you it's really loose if you can't turn the belt at all it's really tight so what what you want is just sort of just enough and tension it accordingly uh, might see if we can uh, I can't even get my hand down there alrighty Yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But anyway, if you go back through the playlist, I think it's only a few videos ago, we did replace the alternator. So I know the belt tension's good because I've already double checked it. And that was only like a week or two ago, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, all right, well, let's get into filter changing. Them being a little bit dirty, that's actually not too bad. I'll just tap it out. All right, so we're going to need a new air filter, but um, I mean, that's being a public holiday and everything, nothing's open. So what we're going to do is I've just tapped it out. Don't use compressed air, just tap it out. And um, that's your filter, of course. If it looks relatively clean like that, which isn't too bad, um, just to chuck it in for the time being. And um, yeah, when we get the chance to, I'll go grab an air filter and slap it in. That's pretty much the reverse procedure. Also, to in the air box itself, grab a rag, just grab a clean rag, and just give it a bit of a wipe out. Um, if there's any like major, you know, like leaves and junk in there, maybe get a shop vac or something like that, and just give it a quick vacuum out. Now some boxes will have um, Torx bits holding the tops on, others got these little clips, it just depends on make and model. Some can be more difficult than others. Now I did notice this, the plastic's gotten brittle over the fuse holder cover, so we'll put that on our list. You thought I forgot, didn't you? So what I've got here is just windscreen washer concentrate or you can just use a little bit of dish soap from under the kitchen sink. All I do is I put a measured two to three tablespoons of the concentrate. And the rest water. Now the reason why I got it in an old soft drink bottle is because Life's a little bit difficult when you've got to wrestle around a 20 litre drum of it, so. And I just use plain old tap water. Now, if you're not sure about what's what, Go through the books in your car, if, if the car's got it of course, and it will show you, it should give you diagrams of where the windscreen washer fluid needs to be topped up, where the dipstick is, and usually good indication is you can probably see the yellow cap and the yellow ring pull on the dipstick and all that sort of stuff, so it might be a different colour like red. And it'll also give you the service intervals for different components to be changed, like your fuel filters and air filters and engine oil and filter and all that sort of thing. Another thing you want to do is just make sure you've got your sump plug washer on. It hasn't dropped into the oil when you've taken it up, taken the plug out or anything like that. 
uh, top tip most of the brand new, well, most of the modern cars are going to have anywhere between about a 13 mil head on the sump plug to a 19 mil in this case it's a 14 mil that's in metric 14 millimeters And it also helps to keep a rag near at hand's reach, just so you're not getting up and down. Alrighty-o. Now, we've got to do the engine oil filter, but that's up top, so that's going to be a little bit difficult to film. But uh, I'll get it off and then we'll we'll go from there. Alrighty push rodders, so first of all just make sure you got the right part number oil filter which is the Z89O which suits this pathfinder. So most cars run this style of oil filter, it's just a spin on style oil filter. Noticing there's more and more cars and vehicles, whether it be trucks whatever, are going to the cartridge style which is sort of like a cylindrical air air filter or you know it sort of looks like that and all they do is it's, it's in a plastic housing and they just undo the plastic housing pull the old one out put a new one in there's a couple of o-rings that sort of deal but we're with with that sort of thing you can't really pre-prime the filter but what i like to do with the spin on style is prime the filter now they're going to be in either you sit like this, spin the filter on. Could be off to the off to the side. Could be like like that, which is what our our little pathfinder. That's the way it's orientated. So what we're going to do, even though we're not going to fill it up to pre-prime it, we're just going to put enough oil in there to let it soak into the actual element inside the paper element at least it gives it a bit more of a uh, half a chance to uh, build prime the oil system a little bit quicker thing you know it's just a little bit of precaution it's just something i like to do a lot of other mechanics they do it now i've worked with some mechanics they go ah don't worry about it it's not worth it it's this it's that it's the other Hey look, it can't hurt at all. And the other thing is too, when you put your oil filter on, get a little bit of oil, even if it's the old oil you've drained, and just put a thin smear on the gasket, rubber O-ring gasket here, to help it seal better. And the other thing too is, is when it comes time for the next service, it makes it easier to get off as well. So that's where the oil filter is, the new one's on there at the moment, which is good, we've semi-primed it, you can only do what you can only do, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty squeezy down there, look, it probably might have been easier to get it from underneath, but trying to lay under the car and all the rest of it, it's just a pain in the ass, so it'd probably be easier on a hoist, but anyway, we'll we're doing it in the driveway with simple hand tools. Now even though it looks like there's heaps of hoses going to this, this is the fuel filter. 
don't be discouraged it's actually quite a fairly simple job so what I'm going to do first is because I've done it heaps of times before I know where all the hoses go and all that sort of thing but if you have any troubles or either everyone's got a phone and take pictures or video or you know pen and paper and draw a diagram whatever it may be and it's just a very simple little procedure Get our little o-rings make sure they're not damaged at all which they look to be fine and, oops. Oops. Just slip this in there for a minute now we do have a plug is going to be a pain in the butt to get into but we will Just be super careful pulling these little clips out because they're a pain in the ass. There we go. That's the electrical connection. pretty much about it that's the reverse procedure as well as priming the fuel system again now you can probably see the tab just here and the corresponding tab on the back's broken it's probably why our o-rings are failing because it's not uh, it's not positively on I guess is the best description. All right, we'll put that on our list and we'll, uh, when we go to the uh, Navara Pathfinder slash patrol wreckers, we'll, uh, we'll get one of these. So we've got our new fuel filter installed. Uh, this little thing here, come with brand new on the filter so we uh, just took off the hoses off of this one that's the old one little top tip these little caps that always come in handy so put them in a safe place top draw your toolbox another box on the shelf whatever it may be now I have left this hose off because what we're going to do is when we start priming it's to push the air out a lot quicker so it, it primes the filter a lot quicker and then once we start getting fuel out of the pipe we'll, we'll put this hose back on and then we'll keep priming until the, uh, the primer goes nice and hard which indicates there's either little or no air left in the system okay no leaks which is good that metallic sort of dinging noise I'm gonna to have to investigate a little bit further with that one and the squeaky belt well if you had a look at our alternator video replacing alternator on one of these um, yeah you'll know all about the belt so I'm not too fussed about that it's at the right tension and all the rest of it so it is what it is okay we'll, we'll have a look underneath and we'll see if we can find any stuff that needs attention. 
three we've got the left hand front wheel off so first things we're going to do is we're just going to do a visual inspection so we're going to look at brake hoses make sure there's no leaks they look all right they're not been rubbing all that sort of thing uh, i think i found i'll get a light see the bottom shock rubber down there that's chopped out so we'll have to get a new rubber for that so that can go in our list and then that'll uh, quieten things down the rrr 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 noise um, another thing we want to have a look at is our, our steering rack boots make sure they're not split no leaks. Uh, any sensor wires, this would be for the ABS. Just make sure it's not cut or anything like that. Uh, and brake rotors, of course. I mean, they're glazed up to buggery. Uh, how much? Oh, we've got plenty of pad left. I actually did a pad slap, which is pretty much just slap a new set of pads in and not machine the rotors. Uh, at the time I didn't have time and I don't think we had the money or whatever at that stage just to get the rotors machine but um, anyway it doesn't overly matter too much they're a bit squealy a bit squeaky so that's going to be on the list of to do things is uh, machine rotors new set of pads so and uh, another thing what I like to do as well Swap so hands is just get in with a pry bar and just start manipulating some of the uh, the bushes and the suspension rubbers, all that sort of thing. Now, if there's a great deal of movement in there, where you're going to go, yeah, okay, that needs replacing. If there's not a great deal of movement, well, just leave them as is sort of thing. So, let's see if we can get a bit out of this. I can see it's chopped out anyway, so that's okay. Uh, we'll get that replaced. So, yeah. Um... Right, I'll finish checking this over. Oh, another thing too is your um, shock absorber. Just make sure that's not leaking any oil because they're actually oil-filled, a lot of uh, shock absorbers. Some are air, predominantly oil. Uh, yeah, and it's pretty much all this area here is pretty much the same on the other side. So I'm not going to film that, but uh, once I get this wheel on, we'll have a quick look underneath uh, there's a couple little minor things that I've seen that I will point out and um, then we'll go head over to the back okay now we're going to check the ball joints so or tie rod ends you've got a ball joint just under here all that sort of thing what we're going to be using is a set of uh, multi grips or for our US friends it's uh, I think they call them channel lock Pliers. all it is probably bigger the better but um, all it is is just try and squeeze it together if we get up and down movement a lot of it while well, the thing needs replacing now the top ball joints could probably do I don't know if this is in camera or not If you can, you can, like so, and yeah, that's how we, that's how I check the ball joints anyway. So drive shaft boots, make sure they're not split. Uh, there's no leaking from them, you know, all that sort of thing. We're looking for any oil leaks, and as with the other bushes, suspension bushes. Uh, the front diff mount there, we can get our little pry bar in there. Uh, 
yes it is a little bit wet there that's only because we did the oil and fuel filters that's all on this side it really does need a good clean which will have to happen reasonably soon uh, oh here we go there we go drive shaft split boot split so we're gonna have to do that sooner rather than later not overly a difficult job it's just time consuming so uh literally it's a wheel off uh the bottom ball joint needs to be undone a few other little bits and pieces out the way and then literally and just a where my finger is just a pry bar in there and just a quick little and that'll come out and then it's just a matter of pulling it all to bits um once you get the front off then you can get the rear one off and yeah it's a little bit involved but it's you know it is what it is so all right um and the same on this side power steering uh rack and boot have a look at that um and as we move back let's bring some stuff out of the way let's be careful as we drop the tool in the oil there's oil splashed everywhere um, where is my light? It's, I know, sorry, it's a little bit difficult but to see. Uh, we're looking for any uh, black around any of the exhaust leaks, especially especially on the flex part of the exhaust. Just if we've got any exhaust leaks. Uh, sometimes universal joints have grease nipples in them. Or grease zerks, I think our US friends call them. Um, so yeah, you might have to have a grease gun on hand, but this one doesn't. Uh, we're looking for any any leaks around the transmission pan. See, most of most of what we do in general servicing is visual inspection. Yeah, about probably a good fifty percent is visual or. 45% is visual inspection. Like there might be a few things like those bushes where you get the pry bar and physically manipulate and move them a little bit to check. But, um, and look, the other 50% is physically getting in there and changing your oil and filters and all that sort of thing. So, okay, so. I just turn the camera off for the moment because I need both hands, but uh, yeah, I just quickly manipulated the uni joint, just gave it a quick little uh, quick little movement just to make sure there's no slop or anything like that. And that's feeling all good. All right. Now we'll move to about the middle of the car. And we've got a little bit to check there as well. Again, this is the other end of that dry shaft for the front. Here we have the transfer case. And what we're doing is we're just generally looking for any leaks. Uh, our exhaust system, let's give it a bit of a tap here and there, make sure there's no exhaust hanger rubber brackets that are broken check our fuel tank because it is a plastic tank make sure there's no leaks okay and our rear drive shaft so we're looking for any leaks out of here no that has no drive uh, grease fitting OK, 
Okay, all right, well, let's make our way to the back and we'll jack the rear up and we'll check the rear brakes. The left will be the same as the right and all the rest of it. Like similar to what we've done on the front. And um, then we're just about done for our service. All right, push riders. Well, the rear is pretty much the same as the front. Uh, you're looking for any leaks out of your shock absorber, if it's oily, any leaks out of your brake lines, uh, any bushes that are trying to push their way out, you know, use your pry bar, manipulate them a little bit. Now the rears need the brakes doing within probably a couple of weeks, one to two weeks, so we'll have to get onto that. But not only machining, but uh, the pads, uh, yeah, there's, there ain't much pad left, so that's really got to happen sooner rather than later. All right, well, uh, let's get this wheel on and we'll have a quick look under the back. We'll have a look at if there's any leaks around the diff area. We'll make sure our spare wheel's secure and we'll check our muffler. Uh, we're looking for any leaks off the diff. Um, again, let's get a little bit better. Boots, see if they're split, the dry shaft boots. Check our little sensor wires. Try not to pull on them too hard, just have a, you know, gently. Uh, uh, also to the uh, the muffler, give that just a good, I've done it off camera, but uh, give that a good thumping, a good shake, and if you hear like, ah, uh, sort of like rust and that's knocking and bits of crap floating around in there well you know it's sort of your muffler's either gone or it's on its way out um, it needs replacing but uh, uh don't if your spare wheel is underneath the car make sure it's uh not only secure but pumped up um yeah that's pretty much about it um like your diff bushes and stuff like that just get your pry bar in there I've already done this uh, before I switched on the camera. Just makes life a little easier having two hands. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about it for underneath. All right, let's uh, go up top and sum it all up. Alrighty guys, well that's pretty much what to look out for. Oh, uh, the only couple of other things I forgot to mention is your windscreen wipers. Um, look, if they're in reasonable condition, get a nice clean rag and give them a good wipe on the, on this face here. You know, make sure they're not really perished and crap. Uh, they haven't separated like the back one here, which I've got to replace. So, check those and uh, check all your lights. Uh, brake lights, reverse, indicators, uh, lights, you know, headlights, high beam, low beam, all that sort of deal. So, but other than that, that's pretty much about it. It's a little bit more comprehensive than just, oh, let's change the oil filter and engine oil and all that sort of stuff. Now, there's probably quite a few of you I can hear yelling at your screen going, but I'm not a mechanic, I don't know what to look out for. Hey, that's cool. Just take your time, do your very best you can. Um, consult your workshop manual. If you've got one, there's always YouTube and the internet. That's always good, a good resource. Or e even if you've got a trusted mechanic or family friend that works on cars and all that sort of stuff. You can always ask them and pick their brains or get them to give you a hand. But uh, look, essentially, like I said before, if you're checking suspension bushes and that with a pry bar, I mean, the less movement, the better sort of thing. Like, you're going to expect a little bit, 
but if there's like a huge amount of movement well then you're going to go okay that's that's uh yeah it shouldn't be like that but once you've started to do this a few times like go over and check everything properly you'll start to get into the swing of it and it'll, it'll come second nature as far as time ah look for something that'll probably take about half an hour 40 minutes something like that to do engine oil and filter you're probably looking at probably about an hour to an hour and a half by the time you check everything over probably more an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes by the time you jack it up in your driveway and all the rest of it so that's it for another one what are you waiting for go and get your hands dirty we'll see you next video